Right, and I think if I've got everything configured correctly, we are live. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, Xenos of all ages and everything in between, and welcome to Tactica Imperialis. This is going to be probably the last of our midweek streams or our not on the regular scheduled Friday streams for a while uh, because, well, it's a bank holiday, so I've got the extra day but also because it's the last day before I go back to work. So I'm taking advantage of A, the bank holiday, and B, uh, just the last bit of free time I've got before work to put on one last live stream before we go over to the schedule that I talked about in the channel update um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, where I'll be streaming every other Friday at the minimum, which is the non-podcast Friday. Uh, and then I'll see what I can do about more streams from there. But tonight, 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 tonight's stream is all about, well, it's all in the title, really. I realise that, uh, well, as someone said in the chat when I was talking to them before the stream, the heck is that title? The title is The Truth. It is a conversion project live stream. Uh, we're starting the next of our terrain conversion projects. Uh, there was a poll up on the channel uh, after completing the Altar of Cain project, which I did uh, a week or so ago. And I'm just going to go and check what the final result of that poll was. Now, granted, I already know who won that poll because it was conclusive right from the get-go who won that poll. But with 60% of the 692 votes, so roughly 410 votes, give or take, uh, it was the mausoleum that won the vote. Um, I have my theories as to why. I'm guessing that it's because it said Slanesh in it uh, and everything else was uh, stuff like Carillium. What's a Carillium? Who's a Tyrion? What's a Teclis? What's an Ideneth? Everyone knows what Slanesh is. So um, I think it was maybe why that one won. Uh, but that is what we are going to be doing. We're going to be doing the Elven Mausoleum uh, using the Sigmarite Mausoleum kit. Uh, and converting it up to create a new terrain project. But, of course, as the title suggests, it is a democratically converted project. Um, one thing I really enjoyed about doing the Altar of Cain was actually having chat help with all of the conversions. So having chat give ideas, um, suggested conversion options, and, in fact, someone actually gave me a Photoshop mock-up of what we were doing. Um, so I'm really hoping that uh, if chat wants to get involved once again uh, and get involved in all of this conversion stuff, throw your ideas in there and we will absolutely come up with something. Uh, so that's why I've sort of been trying to promo this stream a bit because, you know, the more people are here, the more voices we get in the conversation and the more democracy goes into the conversion, which I think should be fun. So hopefully everything's working um, as it was intended. I uh, haven't tinkered with any settings, but we've got plenty to get on with. So how is everyone doing it this evening? Um, well, it's an evening for me. It's a bank holiday Monday in England, so I've had the day off. Um, but how are people doing this fine day, uh, whether it's lunchtime in America, or early morning in America, possibly, um, whether it's stupid early in the morning across in Australia, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well, uh, and I hope you've got something interesting on your hobby bench uh, that you can be getting on with uh, in the meantime. Admittedly, I'm at the point now where I kind of am out of things to do. I'm just going to drag this toolbar up a smidge just to get all the chat on screen. Thought I had that right. I didn't. Um, but I've got so much off the hobby desk during this time since I've moved house. Like, I've done the Hag Queen conversion, the Slaughter Queen conversion that I've done, done the Blood Rack Medusa. In fact, I've done a good chunk of my Blood Rack Shrine at this point. Um, so this is where my Blood Rack Shrine is currently at. Uh, I've showed the mirror before. Uh, there's the Medusa herself. I've got all of the central chassis done now. So I'm just onto the wheel axles and then it's just exterior decorations and the Witch Elf crew. So that's nearly done. And I've done that off stream on my own time, which has been really quite rewarding to do just when I've had a bit of downtime in between lesson planning. Uh, so I've got that mostly done, um, which is quite fortuitous given the fact that A, we're about to start a big terrain project and B, the Lumineth are out. Oh, the Lumineth are out next week. Oh no, oh my poor purse. Oh, my purse can't cope with this. Oh, Teclis, 
the archers, the redonkulous barrel dice. Oh, blimey, 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 blimey. It's, uh, it's a big wave, and then the Lumin rest of Luminar throughout the week after that with the Alarith spirit, and it's just, oh, no. Oh, my money. I can't buy anything because I need to wait for my first paycheck, and just, oh, no, 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 no. But anyway, uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, but I hope, as I say, that people are doing reasonably well out in the wide world of chat. Um, but anyway, I will stop dawdling and just killing for time because I'm going to be honest, I've been chomping at the bit to get started for the past several hours, days. Yeah, definitely days. Um, since I, um, I actually got this kit sent to me um, by a subscriber who got it on the cheap through the Mortal Realms magazine. So they're known as Harry in my Discord, and I'd like to give them a shout and a thank you for uh, sending me their mausoleum. On the, I paid for it. I did pay for it. It was slightly cheaper than I would have had to pay sixty pound for the full kit. I got it for less, uh, but I want to thank them for sending me that. Uh, it's much appreciated. It's a full kit, so we've got no missing options, which is going to be excellent. So we've got plenty to do. Night Lords that are Mark III, I make them to Crimson Suns. That sounds interesting. That does sound interesting. I've never seen Red Night Lords before. That could be cool. Um, so obviously, I'm biased on my legions in red because Thousand Suns. But, you know, uh, we'll see how we go. Right, let's get cracked on, shall we? So, there are a couple of things about this kit that are very interesting and very weird. So, the kit comes in four frames. So you've got this first frame here, which has got your gatehouse, um, the statue, if I have to turn it that way, uh, the statue, walls, um, and fences and some stuff like that. So you've got a few f bits on here, which is mostly around the sort of decoration and exterior. You've then got two frames that are exactly the same as each other that look like this. So these when paired up correctly with the second frame that's exactly the same uh, these go together to create the mausolea themselves uh, there's a grand total of two yeah i think you get two in total uh, out of this uh, if i recall correctly i think you get two mausoleums in total uh, and i will apologize in advance for the fact that i say mausolea and mausoleums and I will change the pronunciation of that word several times throughout this project. I know me. I'm going to keep changing how I pronounce that because uh, I know what I'm like and I am a pain in the backside. So I've got two of these frames that will make the actual buildings and there's a few fences and gates and gargoyles and thingamabobs as well. And the final frame is the one that holds it all together at the bottom. If you decide to do a lot of gluing, you get um, the floor. So some of these... Uh, this one's where the statue sits. You can build one of the mausolea around this coffin, one around this one, and then this one's a bit more open, and that's where you sit your gate. So there's plenty of different bits in here, um, but obviously it's very Sigmarite, um, and we need to elf it up, uh, because I'm sorry, I play elven armies. Broken Realms is now a thing. My elven civil war... Thing is super mega justified because it's actually freaking happening like in like six months it's actually happening so i'm doing it uh so we need to elf this up a bit which is where i need chat to help me out um i haven't got a complete set of everything elf ever in fact i'm starting to run low on some spare parts so i'm looking forward to shadow and pain to get me some more spares um but i've got plenty of witch elf parts uh i've got plenty of idenf parts uh i've got essentially 10 black art corsairs that I don't care about from Skewish Privateers, so I can easily cannibalize their cloaks and, well, them in general um, for parts. I don't, however, have all of my elves. I think my, uh, I haven't got much spare from my uh, other stuff like Darling Covens and Order Serpentis. Most of it's been used at this point. So I'm a little, little low on spares for some things, but I've got enough Daughters of Cain and of course, I've got some Lumineth parts as well, so it's not all Dark Elves. But I haven't got my High Elf parts, um, with the exception of like some Swordmasters that I planned to turn into Executioners and never did. So I haven't got a complete set, and I might have to bob off screen to just go rooting around in boxes for more boxes to get all the frames. But we'll get there eventually. Um, so I've got plenty of parts to work my way through, 
Uh, so if you've got any ideas about what you'd like me to do with this, then this is the time for chat to get involved and get the chat excited. And I borrowed that of another YouTuber. Uh, so we've got plenty to get on with. Who is hot micing in the voice in my ear? Doesn't really matter. Uh, Crimson Suns, just regular Night Lords, but it looks like there's blood coming out the visors. Okay, that sounds interesting. Um, if you're already in the Discord, then please do put some pictures in the Painting and Conversions chat um, when you get it done. Right. So, I already have a plan for a few of these components. My primary thing revolves around the actual... Come on. I've got my hand stuck in the frame now. Here we go. Around these actual buildings. Um, I had a look and I had a thought of using Lumineth shields on the roofs because the Lumineth Oralan Wardens kit, the um, Hot Lights kit, the Pikeman, sorry, um, that kit comes with so many shields it's not even funny. And they actually fit quite nicely on the roof of the Mausolea. So you can get two on here, um, two on this roof and then repeat on the other one. So you can use eight shields on the roofs to add some elven stuff to this very sigmarite thing. Uh, obviously a lot of it is from the Garden of Moor way back, so you've got a lot of death symbology, and that's fine because it's a mausoleum. Uh, so some of this stuff will have to come from painting, but uh, that's my first thought, thing I want to do. Um, but I'm of course, as I said, open to ideas from chat because, well, I can only uh, come up with so much. Uh, you haven't missed anything so far, mostly it's just been introducing what we're doing um, and just sort of introducing the concept of this stream, which is chat democracy, uh, getting on with setting up the uh, conversions and probably doing some of the conversion work as well. Uh, sort of the uh, all I've done so far, I haven't actually started yet, though I do have a plan for something when we get started, which is probably going to be about now because I cannot wait to get started. Right, so I've had a fiddle with this once already to try and get the parts right. Um, I'm going to be careful and try and match up because these two, not this frame. So these two frames, whilst they're identical, match up with each other in such a way to make the actual buildings and it's awkward. Um, so it's not great. Um, high Elf made, Dark Elf graffiti. Um, I'm not probably enough of a painter to do that um but sorry i'm just gonna just hang on um right there now i don't hear my voice on my ear twice um so one thing i have got a plan for with the paint scheme is a lot of the stone work is going to be the purple stone we've done the altar of cain so like the brick work and things like that but um, some of the buildings um, are going to be more of the white stone um, that I used on the altar before with white and blues because of the uh, high elven colours and the roofs I might alternate colours so I'll have a high elven one and a dark elven one because uh, I haven't really got much wood elf stuff to work with and I never really got into sylvaneth either so that was sort of my thought process on the painting uh, but I can also try and add some Dark Elf iconography, like from the Witch Elves kit, there's some banner toppers uh, that I can use. And there's also, like I said, um, shields from the Lumineth kit as well. Right, let's start getting this out. Do, 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 do. Also, hashtag elves break everything. I mean, that's partially true. The elves do break a lot of things. That's, it's not entirely unfair. Uh, so I need that one and then I need its copy on this one, which is you. Uh, I did not see Rylanor's last stand. Um, I've been a bit busy with lesson planning and everything else, so I haven't seen that in all truth. Uh, I'm sure it's good, um, but I haven't actually had a chance to see it because I've been busy. Okay, so yeah, these two parts are exactly the same, but they are reverse of each other, so you can glue them on like that, and that creates the building. Um, and then from there, you put on 
the which one is it is it the no that one's too tall so it must be you no you look wrong oh blimey or is it just that one I might need to go and call up the image of the Sigma Ray Mausoleum kit just to remind myself how this blimmin box actually goes together in the end because well I don't want to get it wrong if you know what I mean I really don't want to get it wrong at all uh, oh hang on is it that one yeah it's that one which must mean that that goes on Oh, and then it's mirrored on the other side. Yep, I understand now. I understand now. I've got it. I've worked it out. I'm pretty dumb, but sometimes I can work a few things out. I'm not a complete idiot. Oh, oh, don't, don't do that. Don't miss the clip. There we go. Okay, so if I've got that right, then this will slot in like that over that. And then this one slots in the other side like that. Yep, and that slots in like that. And then we do the same on the other side. And then that sits on top of one of the floor panels, which is this one here. Bada boom. Yep, and that's how that works. Okay. I've now worked out how to actually build the thing because that's the one thing I'm getting at second hand is it doesn't come with instructions. So you kind of have to work it out on your own. Uh, but that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Uh, which one was it again? It was, oh, it, I need to get that out of the middle. Um, it's the one that has the hourglass. Okay, so that, and then that, and then that, that, and that. Okay. No worries. Yeah, foreground's evil. <laughs> well, so yes, I'm not going to argue with that. Granted, not really. I think that I really hadn't any doubt because I did my law video on the Empress Children so long ago. I know full well how evil foreground is. I definitely don't need telling. Um, right. So I'm going to do something a little controversial and I'm actually going to glue these together because the insides of the buildings are actually very bland and there's not really anything on the inside to put there. And once they're sealed up, you can barely see the inside anyway. So I'm gonna put them together. And if I need to paint like the inside of the gates or whatever, uh, like the gatehouses, because they're gonna be, remember, stuck down over the top of something, then more than likely I will be able to just, like, turn them upside down and get the brush inside like that. So not sure how well this works. I might leave one wall off. Um, so I might put on one side in full. So put that side on and then that side on and leave it open and then get the brush onto the internals uh, where necessary. But I think I'll do a dry fit as well where I don't do that to try and see like how much I need to actually get the paintbrush on the inside. Uh, so yes, that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, and then we get the first bit of conversion, or at least my first idea. Though, of course, as I've said, this is a democratically converted product. So if you have any ideas, chat, please do hit me with them. Because as I think uh, 17, that's pretty good. Uh, 17 people here. So absolutely hit me with those ideas. Uh, and we'll see what we can concoct. Oh yeah, Erebus is definitely worse. Erebus is evil. Okay. Okay, I'll put 
put the put the glue way too high up there. Feelings on ninth edition regarding enthusiasm. Uh, I'll admit, I'm not absolutely chomping at the bit to go play ninth, but that's partly because I know I can't. I haven't got any friends around here that I can invite over for a game. We're also still dealing with a lot of lockdowns and gaming stores are not really able to host games either here in the UK at the moment. So I don't have an appetite to go play ninth because there is no physical way for me to go play ninth right now. So when I get chance, I will go and play it, um, but I'm not chomping at the bit because I know it's not like I'm just waiting for a gap in my schedule. I'm waiting for the law slash common sense and safety to allow me to do it. That said, I do want to play it. Um, and while Psychic Awakening into New Edition is not great, um, it's certainly not as bad uh, as we've seen before, like where my importance was putting out four new battle tomes well aos one but four new battle tomes right before the drop of aos 2 none of which whilst they'd been designed with aos 2 in mind could use aos's unique mechanics like endless spells and faction specific terrain was only introduced with two of them and not all of them so they bungled a release worse than they've than they handled ninth ed uh, in terms of like oh, releases into it. So they've handled it worse before. And so that Psychic Awakening into New Edition thing doesn't bother me as much as it might have done for you guys. Which is fair, I understand why it might. It is definitely an AOS heavy week. Uh, I will not argue with you there. Um, with Teclis getting his model, um, the Lumineth getting their Spearmen, Archers, and the Light of Eltharion on general release. Though it's not all AOS, um, they are also putting out uh, from Forge World, Crusade, which is Horus Heresy Book 9, and Lion L. Johnson himself is also on his way in this week's round of pre-orders. Um, because it's not fantasy, it's Age of Sigma, and I can definitely say it's not fantasy, because fantasy is its own game, and fantasy is coming back eventually. In like two years. Um, check desk good involves. Ah, instructions. That's useful. I think I've worked it out. Uh, but thank you nonetheless for sending me those instructions just in case. Um, yeah, I had got it worked out. I did have it right in my head. Um, just a relief. Though obviously getting the bits and bobs on top is also going to be quite useful. So that that is useful. Thank you very much for that. Um... Yeah, let me just sorry and now I've got now I've got myself checking discord um, just want to check that channel okay fair enough nothing hugely awesome really have broken realms does not follow straight into third I get that I think it will I genuinely think AOS 3 will follow broken realms but I'm hoping Broken Realms doesn't release too many new rule books or battle tomes in it. If they're going to do rules for it, then do a bunch of rules and make that the arc and then end that arc. The problem is with the breaking of the realms, it will introduce a brand new sort of layout to the world, kind of like when the Necroquake went off. So it might be necessary to update the edition not long after, which is not ideal. If they're going to do rules, do rules. But either make it a setting-based thing where it's all about lore and getting some new models that get stand-in War Scrolls and then push the new edition. So there's just a few new models like Psychic Awakening but without all the extra rule books, and then push the new edition. Or make it a full set of rules updates and nothing else and then don't update the edition. There's two ways they can do it. Um, they were not Space Marine Titans. They were just more Bandai action figures. Um, uh, there was an Imperial Fist and a Dark Angel, as I recall. They look pretty good. Um, I admit I'm not in a rush to get them because I'm not massively bothered by action figures, but it is a thing. So, 
Uh, I have built the first of the three um, Mausolea. Um, so this one I've left with one of its walls off so I can get to the interior. Not that you can see much of it once you put this side wall on. You can see right through it, but you don't have much interior detailing, so it won't matter too much if I don't really do anything with it aside from maybe like a basic undercoat. So it's not the end of the world, but I'm gonna leave that off. So, and now that I've built the first of those, this is time to start having a conversion conversation. I know I've been sort of suggesting, oh, throw some ideas, chat, but now is the time. So let me run you through my thought process on what I wanna do with these buildings, or at least some of these buildings, so that you can understand sort of my mindset about like this whole project and what we can do. And I've got loads of spare parts in this drawer, so it's not like I'm out of options. So I've got here a bunch of shields from the Venari All Around Wardens kit. I only need five to complete my unit of them, because um, I've already done five of them. And if I take out one, two, three, four, five, I actually did the maths. I've got eight shields spare scattered around the frames. I think I've got like 11 shields spare or something because two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight on here. So that's 16 total because you duplicate this. And I think there's a couple more lying around. There's like 20 shields in this thing. So because I've got so many shields lying around, I thought process was to do something like this. So if I just pick an interesting one, uh, I don't know, you, you'll do. If I just pick a shield, take the shield off the frame, hello. When do you think third at AOS is gonna start? I'll talk about that in a sec. So, thought idea, the first, was to put the shields on the side of the mausolea. So, have them sort of sat on the side of the building, in fact, I'll get some blue tack and uh, I'll put this on so you can see sort of what I'm thinking. So I get some blue tack, put this down the side of the shield. Just to show you what I'm thinking and put that on there. So my thought was to put the shield on the side of the mausoleum like that um, and repeat that repeatedly because that's a great sentence. So I'll just pop my light on, uh, give you a better, a better look at what I'm doing. So that was my idea, was to put the shields on the roofs of the building to just add a little bit of an elven feel to them because there isn't really much space on the walls for sticking stuff. The roofs, there is. The walls, not so much. So that was my first thought, and that's the only conversion idea I'd really actually had um, for this. Uh, I've got a load of parts and things I can do, but I haven't really had many more ideas beyond that. So first off, do you think that's a good idea, going one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, and then on the other one and go five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight shields I can use for that. Is that a half decent idea? And second of all, is there anything else from what you might know or any ideas you might have about what we can do from there? Because uh, this is just, like I say, an idea I had and I'm more than willing and to be honest, interested in listening to what chat thinks above really my opinion, because I have an opinion. But, uh, you know, I enjoy the cooperative, democratic way of doing things with these streams. So, uh, just clean that shield up a little bit. Right, so I'm going to just unmute that because hopefully there won't be so much hot micing now. Right, so I'm going to go back to that question about AOS 3. When do you think third edition AOS is going to start? Um, I have a theory that it's going to start about this time next year because AOS 2 came a year after 40k 8th edition. So 
uh, 40k8 dropped in summer 2017 and AOS2 dropped in summer 2018. Now we've just had 40k9 this summer, so if they follow that same cycle, AOS3 will drop next summer. I'm willing to be wrong, but that's sort of my thought on when it's going to be, and that's why I think Broken Realms is leading into it. Um, so is this project going to involve Slanesh? Um, sort of, but not really. Um, so when I advertised this one, my idea was it was the mausoleum for the souls that could not be saved from Slanesh. So they came out too broken. Uh, and so their spirits, fragmented as they are, are interred here alongside the bodies and souls of the guardians who stand out watch over uh, the various areas such as the Lumineth, because uh, when Archeon invades the um, Hidden Gloaming looking for Slanesh, he kills some Lumineth. So that was, I wasn't planning for like Slaneshi iconography because it's sort of an in memoriam to the elves rather than a shrine or um, tribute to Slanesh, if that makes any sense. But obviously, there's it sort of involves Slanesh, but it's not Slanesh itself. I have got an idea for a project more connected to Slanesh, uh, which someone suggested of like uh, one of the paradox chains that Slanesh is actually held in. Um, nobody tell Nagash about the Melzalem. Well, duh. But then again, the Ideneth have their Corillia, uh, the Corilliums. Um, the daughters have got too many souls. Nagash has got a lot of soul thieves to deal with. Uh, this little minor thing uh, near Slanesh's tomb is probably not top of the list. Eltharion is with the Lumineth. In fact, um, the named character, one of the named characters for the Lumineth Realm Lords, is the Light of Eltharion, which is Eltharion's soul inhabiting a suit of armor. So yes, Eltharion is with the Lumineth, actually, uh, believe it or not. And Tyrion is also blind. Right, so, anyway, we're getting a little sidetracked there. Uh, it, I know, obviously, people have just got random things to talk about and questions to ask, but I do still want to get this sort of done. And so, getting ideas from chat was kind of on my mind. And yes, Tyrion is blind, yes. Right, let's get this other one out of its box, uh, out of its frames and ready and assembled as far as needs be. And then we can just, if I can get the parts out and ready to go, then we can start looking at things and getting parts together and trying them rather than just having it all be thought experiments. Uh, so it makes sense to just hurry this bit along. If some Slaneshi cultists make it into the realm where Slaanesh is held, then something has gone horrendously wrong. Um, so I wasn't planning to do that because I also don't have the Slaneshi models. So adding in their iconography and the like is something I haven't got the capacity to do if that makes sense. Uh, I haven't got the parts I would need to make that happen. Um, is this the one with the thing? No, not that. So this one is just a simple thing, thing, yeah. That's the one that has the thing. So yeah, okay, this is just a simple one. Okay, excellent, that's easy enough. Just having a look at the instructions again, just to make sure I'm doing the right things. And then these big gatehouse things. Have I taken both of those off? No, I haven't. Go away. Silly thing. Hate it when that happens. It just has a hissy fit about, oh, it's using too much memory and it completely warps the entire thing. So you end up with everything in the wrong place. Limited annoying that. But anyway, doesn't matter. Right. There we go, it's fixed itself now. Excellent. Um, so I need these gatehouses here. So I've just had a voice in my ear chime in about the gatehouse. The only thing with the gatehouse is there's basically no room on it. I, there's nowhere to put anything. Um, like you can put some shield on it, I guess, but it's fully textured on both sides with skulls everywhere, roses everywhere. It's not the easiest thing to actually mess with. 
I can look at it, but at the moment it's a little trickier than just the actual buildings to mess with. Uh, but it's one I'll look at a little later, I think, the actual gate. Um, how many Broken Realms books are you expecting and what kind of matchups are you hoping for? Uh, I don't think it's going to be a huge amount. I'm hoping it's only going to be about four. So Marathi gets one, Teclis gets one. Um, then they may do one for Malerian or Tyrion. Um, debatably, they might do that for one of them. Oh, God, don't break. Um, but I don't want it to go on for nine books like the Psychic Awakening did because it doesn't need it. Like, to set up the story arc, it's the arc of the Elven Gods and messing with everything and Slaanesh's escape. So really, I think it needs to be no more than four or five, depending on how many gods. So one for, Mil one for Marathi, one for Teclis, one for Alariel, and one for maybe Slaanesh. And that's actually enough, I think, for Broken Realms. Because it only needs to be about the affairs of each of the gods, how they intertwine, and then the escape of Slaanesh. So I don't think we need any more than that, in my personal opinion. Um, if it goes on for nine, then I start thinking that we're getting a more of a rule book style approach where they're updating half the game, which doesn't need it because they've actually done better at AOS 2 most battle tomes. There's only a couple left from AOS 1 now, um, and most of those are the battle tomes that were released with AOS 2 in mind, like Daughters of Cain and Ideneth Deepkin. So I don't think we're going to get too many. I'm hoping four or five. We'll also save my money because I'm going to have to buy all of them because I want all the lore and it's probably going to be all about the elves. Um, so I'm going to need to buy all of them to keep up and keep up my persona as the elf obsessed sort of pseudo expert. So I've got a, I've got a reputation to uphold as well. Right. Um, I don't find it weird. I Yes, yeah, Slanesh is, a, is able to change form, but so are all the Chaos Gods. Zinch is constantly shifting form as well. Um, and besides, change is not just in terms of like physical appearance. There's more to change than just what you look like. Um, so Zinch representing more than that while Slanesh represents excess is fine. Exactly. Does Zinch even have a form? We have, a, like, we have artist representations of them, but we have no idea if they have a true form. Or if they do, it's probably just some amorphous blob of warp stuff that we can't even comprehend. So, to be honest, I don't think it's that weird at all, in my mind, but that might just be me in the way I see things. Right, let me just make sure you're all lined up correctly. So if I use you sort of as a locking mechanism without gluing you in, that'll be useful. Nope, come on. Scrape off some of the details on the gate to add room. I could, but then I've got to have something to put there in their place. And I quite like the skull. The rose is such is quite an elegant flower anyway. So bright red roses as an elephant. It's not truly an elven symbol, but I feel like it works for the elves. So I'm okay leaving the roses and the skulls on the gatehouse. Uh, and the brickwork, well, at that point, is just being annoying. Um... So if I just give you a bit, I'm going to be dropping a lot of frames tonight. So if I give you like a closer look at the actual gate, that's what it looks like, the gatehouse. Uh, whether that strikes any inspiration. Uh, now you're supposed to put this Templar cross thing, um, this component right here, on top of here. Uh, and there is a slot for it. I'm inclined not to, and to put something else there. Um, but again... That's uh, something we can discuss. I'm not touching politics with a 10-foot pole tonight. I'm just not. Uh, Non-Euclidean nonsense. That sounds like Zinch. Right. Uh, so I've got one more building to assemble, and this is the awkward one. Oh, blimey. This one's going to take a while, I think. So I've got to get... So I've got these two, and then these are the side walls, and then this goes on top, and you're supposed to put a gargoyle or two on top of that. I'm not doing that. Um, I do not own green stuff. I've never been any good with it, uh, to be honest. 
Um, it's not something I've ever been able to, I've done it before. I've got a video from like five years ago of trying to use green stuff and being terrible. Um, so it's not something I've ever really got my head around is using green stuff, to be completely honest. Um, like I did put a video out today all about like, the joys of conversions, but I actually can't do scratch builds and those sorts of conversions. They're, they're, just, they're just beyond me in terms of skill, um, whether that's green stuff, milliput, whatever. It's just something I have not got the skill set to do in general. Right, so that's that. That sits in there. Oh, very nicely. Good. Okay. So that's one wall. I'm going to put the other wall on. Same idea as I did with the previous one. So I can still get at the internals if I need to, like the insides of the gatehouses, relatively easily. Just, um, I can, but I can also, if I don't need to work on the insides, then I won't have to. And good grief, these are big. Okay, I should have taken this off before I started gluing. There we go. I can get to that most. Oh, that's why I missed. why that was so difficult to cut through because I missed the actual bit you're supposed to cut. Well done, Tack. Right. Use actual moss on tyrannies. Oh, if you can do it, then great, do it. I just never was able to. I, the static grass and sand and stuff, not in my wheelhouse. Not at all in my wheelhouse, unfortunately. It's just the way, way of the thing that it was for me. I just never got my head around it. Like sand bases, I, I hated doing sand bases. Hated them with a passion. So now I use Shattered Dominion bases, so I spend even more money, but at least they're easier for me to use and they don't just fall apart over time. Whoop. I am having a very good night of holding on to things. I'm dropping frames left, right, and flipping center. Aish. Right, anyway, where was I? Yes, there we go. Do 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 Okay, that's clean. Well, clean enough. Okay, so that's as much gluing as I need to do right now. Pretty much, I'm just gonna get this piece off, because uh, again, symmetry. So this is the one that's supposed to have like a bell tower, except it's not actually a bell tower, it's just a little bit of tower. Uh, surprised that actually there is no bell, um, there is no bell inside the tower. Hmm, that's kind of a shame, um, but it is what it is. Um, so I could actually replace the top of the bell tower um, and keep that bell tower section separate for something else, uh, but I'd need something to put up on here. Um, so that's the fourth, the third building. Uh, you're supposed to put a bell tower, as I say, on top of it, but I could see myself actually not if I can find something else to put up there uh, that is of an appropriate size and scale. 
Uh, not that I'm sure what that is, to be honest. Like, the Sigma statue would be out of place here. Very out of place. Even though it would probably fit, it would look very out of place. Um, but yes, uh, we've got the primary bit of assembly that I wanted to do done. Uh, though I will also assemble this little half bell tower thing while I'm, uh, while I'm here. So, right chat, if you haven't already, please get your conversion hats on. I need ideas. Hit me. Metaphorically. Fair enough. Uh, what's this? Okay, that's fine. That's not pertinent to the stream. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep track of a hundred things at once. Right, where's the other half of this? It's there. What do I need ideas about? Um, as I say, I'm trying to convert this thing, uh, but I want to elf it up. Uh, so that's what I need ideas about, elving this thing up. Um, so I've had ideas of putting shields on some of the rooftops, but just things to sort of change up the look of the like, whole kit to make it just look different. Uh, and add some elven components to it. So I've got loads of Lumineth, Daughters of K9, Neth Deepkin parts. I've also, as I say, got 10 Black Art Corsairs that I don't need because I'm not ever going to play Scourge Privateers in my Cities of Sigma army. They're not my thing. So I, I could use those in some way, like the Sea Dragon Cloaks or whatever. I just need ideas. Extra heads on spikes is not particularly... For an elven graveyard, I don't really think that's a thing that I was looking to do. Um, horns. Um, I haven't got the Lumineth enough. I haven't got the Alarith components that would be required to do most of that. Um, but that's an interesting idea, like adding some iconography and symbols. I think words, like I say, my first initial plan involves putting shields on the roofs of the buildings sort of like sort of like that to just add a bit of lumineth symbols to them um so that was one of the things i have got in mind that's supposed to how is that supposed to sit up there yes, the answer appears to be with great difficulty um That's gonna. That's an awkward thing to put on top of this bell tower. Actually, really awkward. Okay, it goes. It does go. <laughs> wrong god. <laughs> Hashit is a uh, wrong race. Wrong god. Um, and sacrifices. I've already got an altar to Cain. I definitely don't need sacrifices. I've got a pool of blood on an altar of Cain already. Uh, so that is definitely not within the required things uh, for this project. Right, so that's that. Okay, so time to put the converting hat on, metaphorically speaking. So if I go looking around for spares, what have I got? I've got shields, I've got pikes, though I'd need to get their arms off. Um, I have got some old elf models, actually. So as I say, I've got 10 Black Art Corsairs and nothing to do with them because I don't want to use them for Scourge Privateers. The main challenge is finding somewhere to put them, uh, in all honesty. It's finding a space to sit them uh, on these models because they're very dense and there's not a lot of flat space. Um, so, like for example, on these floor tiles that I've got here, uh, a lot of these are fully like textured stonework and graves. So I could have like a small statue maybe here, uh, but there wouldn't be room maybe here. Well, there might just be room there. Uh, there'd be room for one there, possibly. So I could use some Black Art Corsairs kind of like statues, but they'd all look the same because uh, I haven't got all my old High Elves aside from Swordmasters of Hoeth. 
Okay, I can mix it up a little bit with Saw Master Poet. And also that's a crow. Or a raven. Probably a raven. Um, is that supposed to go? Hmm, I'm not even sure where that's supposed to go. Never mind, not important. Um, so, if I just put you over there for two minutes. Uh, Eldar is the wrong... I don't have any Eldar parts. Um, so I've also got, for example, some... Um, symbols and helms. So these are like war masks of the Sisters of Slaughter that I've got. I've got a couple of banner toppers from that kit as well. Um, some shields, though I'd have to cut the arms away from the shields. Um, I can't really do weapons because they've all got arms holding on to them, which is making that a bit more difficult. So that's Sisters of Slaughter. That's my other Lumineth parts, which is pretty much just shields and torso. So, And the heads have actually got heads in them. Um, so that's a little bit awkward. That's more witch elf parts. That's that's one helm left of Ideneth Deepkin, but again, you can see the face, so it would be a bit awkward to use. Uh, what have I got here? That's Kinarai, but that's pretty much entirely just heads. That's Melisai. I've got Melisai masks. Uh, I've got some hearts from the Daughters of Cain. Um, I've also got some bows and some spears, but again, they're being held in hands. That's also Kinarai. Got a few bits uh, of Ideneth stuff, but I'm also conscious of the fact I want to do a Carillion one day. So some of this stuff would be quite cool. Elven equivalent of an angel statue. Um, there really isn't one. Like, the Kinarai harpies exist, but I've used their, all their wings up. Um... And there isn't really such a thing as like angelic figures in Elven society, as I recall. So I've got like Ideneth things I could leave as like offerings outside one of the tombs, but they have their own thing as well. Oh, yeah, I do remember that person. I'm glad your move went well. Um, so congratulations on that. I've got a lot more witch elf stuff here. Knives, banners, banner toppers, masks, um, slash helmets type thing. Um, that is all stuff I need to keep for my Oralan Wardens. Most of that I need to keep for my Dawn Riders, and that's the Light of Eltharion. So there's not a huge amount down there. Uh, oh, there's stuff from like Witch Elves in particular. Dwarven stuff? No. If it's spears to lean on each other to form this kind of like standing rack. Um, I have, I have actually got uh, some of those, but they're on my Cold One Chariot. Um, they're on my Cold One Chariots, unfortunately. Um, I have actually got like a spear rack on my Cold One Chariot. Um, so I have got that, but it's already in use, unfortunately. But I could probably rip it off if I wanted to, uh, which is an option. Um, right, let's have a look in... Here. So I've got a full Meliasai kit that I haven't touched yet, um, which I'm going to be making into Blood Sisters. So I've got Blood Stalkers um, as a thing. It's all their bows and the little dragon, but that's on a wrist. Uh, I've got the spare weapons from the Slaughter Queen, Hag Queen that I didn't use. Um, the Bloodrack Shrine parts are all going to be used up. There's not much in that Thoughts of King box. Uh, Ideneth Deepkin box, that's got actually Ideneth in it. Start collecting Anvil Guard, what have I got in you? Uh, Terracotta Warriors would be great, um, unfortunately, oh wait, hang on, uh, have I got my Lothurn Sea Guard with me? Ooh, what about my Lothurn Sea Guard? I think I have them with me. Um, so I actually have got um, from the Scourge Runner Chariot Kit, I can just untangle the bleeding frame. How are you? Oh, that's how. You're stuck inside a... What are you stuck inside? A hand bow? What? How's that even happened then? Hold on. Let me just get you disentangled. There we go. Hand bow topper. So I've got these... Um, side plates from a Scourge Runner Chariot and I could cut out s this sort of area 
to have the spear axe, so I could keep that. So they'd be useful. Uh, I've also got this like trident thing on one end. That's something I've got. Uh, as I say, I've got these Black Art Corsairs and their Sea Dragon cloaks are sculpted into the back. So I could actually stick them somewhere onto something and it wouldn't be too inconspicuous. But it would write off my chance of ever using the Corsairs. Not that I mind that particularly. It's just something I've got to keep in the back of my mind. Uh, so there's plenty in there I can use. What about my Lothern Sea Guard? I need to remember what box I left all of my stuff in when I moved house. So I've got one box of like spare stuff and one box of actual models. Um, sea Guard with the new shields. Um, I want to put the shields, as I mentioned earlier, onto the roofs of here. And the Sea Guard have got their like sea dragon shields already. Um, so they're kind of all right, and they're not actually able to be pulled off because they're sculpted on because it's from a box game. Um, so it's not too great to print knife is. Yeah, now a print thing I don't have, unfortunately. Um, putting hands behind shields. Yeah, the problem is most of the shields are, I, I've got hands attached to them because they're daughters of cane shields, the blade of bucklers. Right, phone, get out of the way. I had... I thought, so which box has got my Lothern Sea Guard in it? It's probably not this one. Ugh. You're getting a look behind the curtain tonight, folks, because I'm pulling out all the boxes I moved house in. Um, ow. Ow, 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 ow. Come on, my finger. So those are all the possible spare frames. Pile of elven spares. So useful. Giant pile of elven spares. Uh, I'm also conscious that I've got headphones in. And so I don't want to pull them out either. Uh, right. So you're empty. Uh, you're empty. You might have bows in. So I'll keep you around. Uh, you're useless, you're Tau, you're broadly useless, I think. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use an Alpex head, but, you know, maybe. Kinner Eye box, empty. Fire Warriors box, useless. Aha, my High Elves box, my High Elves Battle Force box. If any boxes, oh hang on, that's my Stormcast box, isn't it, hold on. I think it's a Stormcast box. Um, I'm pretty sure. I just need to get into it again because I taped it all up when I moved house. To stop anything from flying out. Oh, the stuff in there sounds broken to be honest, but. this box now and this box contains if it will just lift 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 why are you stuck why are you stuck the box should not be stuck fine I'll just open it fully there we go that's fully open And as expected, that's my Stormcast box. Um, with broken bits. Well, not many broken bits, actually. Could have been a lot, lot worse. It certainly was a lot worse when I came back from France, I'll tell you that for nothing. Uh, right, so that box is broadly useless for this project because that's all Sigmarite, and I don't want Sigmarite, I want Elven. Right. Um, all Battle Force. Okay, it's the other box. Darn it, wrong box. Go over there. Right, now I need the other one. The tower is useless for this project because, quite frankly, um, they're in the wrong universe. Uh, 
Simple as that, they're in the wrong universe. So they're no use to this project because they're in the wrong universe. That would look very out of place to have sci-fi stuff in a fantasy setting. You get out the way. Oh god, this box feels heavier already. That's because it's got some balls in it. Oh, I just got my tripod in it. That would be the reason why. Sorry about this, folks. I just realised that some of my... I'm trying to remember what I've got left where. Um, so it's just a case of gutting this messy corner in my office. Right. Aha. So your 40k, your Sigma, no you're not. Your Sigma and the Raffi box. I think this is where I keep all my Darkling Coven and things. Um, so, yeah, this is where I keep my Darkling Covens. Now, what have I got? Aha! Aha! I think we've hit the jackpot, folks. I think we've hit the jackpot. I've got High Elf Spearmen in various states of decay. I've got Swordmasters of Hoeth. <coughs> I've got Dark Shards from 1992. They're not actually from 1992. They're just that old that I don't really care when they're from anymore. Uh, oh, my Fleetmaster conversions. Oh, I love these things. I remember these from my last place. I like the Fleetmaster conversions, so I'm going to leave them out. Drink. Need that. I've got assassins. I've got executioners, old and new. Uh, the five metal ones in particular, I have no real use for because uh, you can't have units of fives um, in new ones. Okay, I think this box is what we call Nirvana, folks. This is as good as it's gonna get. Um, because some of my stuff is still in my parents' loft, unfortunately, and thus is no ability for me to access. In here is a razor shark, is it? It's a razor shark and not much else. Okay, that's fine. That box is useless. Yeah. Okay, so we've hit our Nirvana box. We've hit it. Uh, now we need to work out what the bloody hell to do with it. Excuse my language. Okay. Do 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 do. Out the way, out the way, out the way, out the way. So the models I have on hand, I have dark shards, like old dark elf crossbowmen. I have swordmasters of Hoeth, painted and unpainted actually, because I've got some from Island of Blood and some from Spire of Dawn. I have. Come on, come on. Off. High Elf Spearmen, that definitely don't exist anymore. They've been retired in favour of the uh, Aurelans. Uh, I also have five of the Metal Dark Elf Executioners that I don't have much use for anymore because Executioners have to be taken in units of ten and I only have five of these. Um, I actually have an old converted Dark Elf Battle Standard Bearer um, made out of a High Elf Archer's banner, among other things. This is one of my older conversions. It's a High Elf Prince model uh, with Archer gear and stuff. It's a weird old conversion, this one. And I've got that. This is one of my first freehand projects. I've got the High Elf... I've got a High Elf Mage, who I just need to change the arm of. Um, I've got a sort of... What were they called? The Sea Guard named characters. I've forgotten their names. Uh, I converted one of those out of, I think, a prince, by the looks of it. Um, they were the Sea Wardens? I don't remember. Oh, right, okay, that's about work tomorrow. I need to read that when I go on a break. I think that's all I've got. Oh, I have, uh, I'm probably going to keep this model, but I have the Dark Elf Sorceress. Um, as well. 
Probably going to keep that one though because I like that model. Um, as mentioned, I have an assassin. One of the old assassins. And I think that's all the unique ones I have in all the different designs I have in here. So yeah. Oh, and another different assassin as well. Uh, but I don't play Shadow Blade, so I'm kind of okay with getting rid of those and putting them to use in these projects. So yeah, that's um, that's sort of what we've got to work with in terms of options. So one of the thoughts someone had regarded putting them as like statues standing around. So take this as an example. If I put, uh, which one looks good? This one looks good. So if I put this building onto here, there is room outside the building to put, say, um, sword masters either side. So I could have two sword masters sort of stood on guard outside. So that's something I could do if I could get them off their bases. I can repaint them as like statues and stick them outside the mausolea for say that one, uh, could be sword masters. And then this slightly different one, this slightly smaller one, if I can just get it to sit in its thing, might have stood outside, um, right by the gate, might have, that I think needs to go the other way, hold on. So this one might have an assassin sort of stood. Actually, there's not much room for an assassin there. Also, this is really warped out of angles. <sighs> okay, that just needs fixing. Um, I have, well, all of these models are on the old square bases, but those square bases will be destroyed as I cut up the models. So. I have got square bases, but they're going to get destroyed very quickly as I go along here. Um, Oh, the factions are not that mixed, to be honest. Um, this is what I'm creating. So, they, to be honest, they're all under order. So, that, like the idea of the factions of order. But to be honest, Marathi, Teclis, Tyrion, Malakith, now renamed as Malerian, um, are still not friends. So, don't worry. I'm mixing these together because this is the sub dimension where Slanesh has been captured by all of them, and so it makes sense for there to be an element of mixing. Um, sort of a recognition of the team effort that's gone into this. That's all. Uh, no, I've never read Lovecraft as it happens. Uh, it's not really my thing. Um, to be honest, I'm not particularly a Lovecraft kind of person, I'm afraid. Horror is not really my thing, I'm afraid. It's just not me. Okay. So, right. Uh, where's the... There's the lid. The other thing I'd like to do, if I can get it loose, is use this bell tower for something. Because um, the statue's got to go on there. But could I put the bell tower somewhere else? Uh, probably not, to be honest. Um, but like on there is fine. But I'd love to put like a bell on the inside. There's just no way of mounting one, really. And I haven't got anything that would be appropriate. Oh, I have a lantern. I've got this lantern thing. Far too small. Far too small. Ah, actually, a small warding lantern might be appropriate. And I could change the mage hand out for this one thing. Um, and just sort of have it be... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, file that away as an, a thing you might do later. File that away of... A warding lantern in the bell tower. File that one away, because I might use it later. 
Okay. So those are sort of, now that we know what we're working with, because uh, I've also got the Corsair parts, uh, and I've got the banners, iconography that I can use on the doors. Uh, not that they're really doors, they're gates, but you know what I mean? I can put like icons in place, uh, like the skulls. I could put like a, a Sisters of Slaughter banner head or have a, a small banner flying over the Dark Elf Mausoleum, uh, for example. Actually, I've got the same thing with the Lumineth as well, so I can have a High Elf one flying over the other. Ooh, so many ideas, so little time. Now, now the creative juices are flowing, and this is why I wanted chat here, because chat can also temper my madness, because I'm also slightly insane. So, that's the other thing I need chat for, to make sure I've not completely lost it. Boom. I'm also going to take this Imperial Eagle off of here. Now, I don't have a file or I do it with a file, but I'm definitely taking this Imperial Eagle off. I will put a new symbol there. Definitely. Yeah, my school's opening tomorrow, so this is my last day before I go back to work uh, or start work. And so my school's back in for now at least. Uh, most, if not all, schools in England are going back, to be honest. I think actually all schools are going back, at least in England. So I might put on there um, a clutched heart or something. That might be good, like a clutched heart or something could go on there. Just to symbolize, hey, this is a dark elven tomb. Um, which would make sense. And I could have um, executioners standing guard rather than sword masters. Um, and then you, actually their diagonal feet might actually make them much easier to stand than a square base would. Hmm. But then the square base, if you cut them up right, could function as like mini plus. But no, these are metallic. Oh, there'll be a nightmare if I do that. No, better to just take them off the bases. I've got ideas going now, and so it's just a case of actually making it happen. Where's, there's the banner. Okay, fine. So yeah, I've got this banner flying. Do, 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 do. I'll just pop that back up there. That's the. That's all fine. Okay, right. So how do we do this? How do we do this? So I'm going to focus for now on this one, which is the one that's got the large building that sits atop it, kind of like that. So we're going to focus on this one for a while. And here's what I'm thinking. Stop me if you think I've gone nuts, um, because I will absolutely stop if you think I've gone nuts. But I just want to throw this out and see what we think. Uh, so, there's the plinth itself, and the building sits on it like that. Nice and easy, no dramas, nice, simple stuff. Lovely stuff. Um, on these front areas, there are some stones. Um... And on those front areas, I would like to put two of the old metal executioners. So one sits there, and if I just reach down and grab another one, one sits there. So the two executioners, which I'll take off their old bases, or at least trim them down. No, if they've got metal slaughter bases, I'll either keep them on or take them all off. Probably take them all off. We'll stand either side of this. Actually, I'm going to swap those two over because the sword's being awkward. Was it still called a drape back then? I don't remember. So these two can stand either side of the thing as sort of statues. I'd repaint them as just simple stone statues 
um, probably in the dark elven style, or maybe in the brighter style because they need to stand out. And I would also like to, if I can, um, actually, hang on, I've left a piece on. I would like to have a banner flying. Um, though I'm not sure how well without a proper banner pole I would get that banner to fly. Hang on, just need to get the banner up there. That's a Daughters of Cain banner from the Witch Elves kit. Have that flying up there as well. You can just see sort of what I'm doing here. And on the inside there's a tomb. And on that tomb, I'm thinking of putting this symbol, uh, which one? This symbol here, which is a clasped heart, which is quite a common Canaanite symbol, and have this be the Dark Elf tomb of the complex um, from Marathi and Malerian's perspective. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, and then to the building itself, I will also affix a couple of shields, which will have to unfortunately be drawn from the Lumineth kit because I don't have Dread Spear shields or Dark Shards that I could use. Uh... Okay, fine. I'll read that later. And stick some Lumineth shields on there, or maybe I will wait um, until I get some Dread Spears and just order them off like Element Games or something, make them as Dark Shards. Um, and then keep the spirit shields and put them on there and that will be the Dark Elf tomb in the complex if you follow me. So that was my thought. Um, I do not have a pin drill, no. Uh, pinning is not something that I've ever really done before so I haven't got uh, a drill that I can use. I have a drill but not a pinning drill. I have a probably like hardware DIY drill. Uh, no to that demand, not a chance. It is also not a church for ants. It is a tomb for fragments of elven souls. That's what it is, if you must know. Okay, so let's actually execute that plan now, unless chat stops me and offers me an alternative idea. Because just saying stop is useful, but telling me where I'm going wrong is even more important. Um, pikes, the pikes generally belong to the other Lumineth ones, and so I want them to go alongside the High Elves, because I've got High Elf Spearmen that I can use to stand guard outside the other one. I've also got, though, you do remind me, the weapon racks from a Scourge Runner Chariot that I could mount to it. Um, that one of them might serve, quite, after using that thing, might serve quite nicely as a banner pole um, for the banner. Okay, so let's actually execute this then. Murder a pike into a pole. Yeah, I've just had the same thought and I've actually got here like this trident thing from the Scourge Runner, which has got no hands on it so I can actually cannibalize that even more easily than um, than anything else. Right, so execute. Let's also cut this off the back. Obviously, I'm doing all this now, but I'm going to keep working on these projects over the next few months, and suddenly, boom, Malerian's Elves are going to come out, and I'm going to have so many more options, and then, boom, Tyrion's Elves are going to come out, because I genuinely think Tyrion's going to be a separate faction to Teclis. And then it'll be like, oh, right, so all those parts that you were scrambling for, have a thousand more. It's just like, oh, that's not really useful, is it? Well, it will be, but it'll just make this project look a bit dull by comparison because I will have far less options but that's fine and when I've raided my parents loft and got all my old high elves back um, that will also help so that's what I've just done there uh, I've just put actually I'm just gonna hold on 
So I've just put a, uh, a witch elf symbol over that too. Sort of give it a bit of a dark elven aesthetic. Have I ever done Alpha Legion before in gaming? Um, no, I've never faced Alpha Legion, nor have I ever really played Chaos. So because Alpha Legion are not really, my, or Chaos is not really my thing. Oh, I actually have the banner pole here um, from the Witch Elves kit. I actually have, I actually have the banner pole. I don't know why I was so worried about it. I just need to cut it off at the finger. There we go. Cut that off. And stick a banner to it. I don't even need to murder a pike, as uh, someone put it. I can just take what is rightfully on the kit. Oh, Alpha Legion saw a lot of play in 8th edition because they were the best at recycling cultists, as I recall, I think. Am I right in saying that? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so that will sit on there. Um, sorry, I was just doing a bit that, that a bit too low. So that will sit on there quite nicely and fly. A bit, it's a bit low, I'll admit. It's a little bit low, but there's not much I can do about that. Um because of just the way this banner pole is designed. Uh, I could also put an icon on it actually on top, like this um, wrath symbol that the Daughters of Cain have. Uh, so I'll stick that to it as well, because that's supposed to be there. Uh, I've never even played him. Uh, the only Imperium army I've ever had, I had a very small army of um, Astra Militarum for a very short period of time, only like a year. Uh, though it was the year I started the channel. So, no, no to Blood Ravens as well. I don't know, unfortunately. Right. So, I'm going to get my blue tack. Put that there, just underneath there, and stick that to here temporarily. So that's the top of the mausoleum now. Uh, we've got this banner. Granted, it's blue tapped and loose rather than glued because just the fact that I haven't actually fully stuck these things together yet um, so it's just blue tacked on for now uh, and when we get to the painting stage I'll properly affix it uh, when we finish but that's how that's going to look on there um, the other thing would be the Lumines shields but that can wait um, was there anything else I was going to add I think that was it wasn't it oh the weapon racks yes the weapon racks sorry Miles away there. Um, so cut that there, cut that there, and then cut straight down. Yeah, cut straight down, I think. So I've got two of these spear racks that I can use as well, uh, which can then be grabbed by the guardians or whatever if need if there's an open army in there to defend it, which there probably should be. Uh, so where does it cut? Right along. There, perfect. So those two are the same size, perfect. Okay. okay, 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 okay. So, now, what do I put, where do I put these? Take the banner pole off, it's just gonna get in the way and annoy me. Um, should I sit them sort of, ah, these, oh, that bed of roses is actually quite annoying. 
No, I can work around the bed of roses um, quite easily, actually. If I just make these a bit thinner, then yeah, I can definitely work around the bed of roses quite easily. Um, actually, very easily, to be honest. Hi, Kaz. Kaz is uh, the, well, I say mastermind, uh, one of the people very much responsible for the Altar of Cain project. So uh, their voice carries weight in my mind in terms of coming up with conversions. So, uh, can I take a little bit more out of here? Uh, just a smidge, yeah, I think I can. Yeah. Okay, and then that will sit in there quite nicely. Um, I can do that on both sides, though that one sits that side. And then that one would be sat. Crazy ideas is modus operandi. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I feel very much the same. So at the moment, I'm defiling old high and dark elves as well as my bits box to completely change up this uh, mausoleum into something new. Um, so I'm just doing that at the moment. Just it's uh, it's almost desecration of what was what GW have done. Okay, take that off. There we go. Okay, so if I've got this right, this should sit with that on the inside, it means that that sits there. Okay, yep, yeah, so that sits there. And I've got two weapon racks that can easily be drawn from by any who need to defend the mausoleum. That's a good idea. So I've got weapon racks on a mausoleum, because you know, they can be attacked, especially by followers of Slanesh or followers of Nagash. Makes sense. Human buildings to elves to stretch them and get some curvature on the walls. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, granted, because these are like four-sided plastic bits, curving them and stretching them is going to be a nightmare. So I think for the main like structure, I don't want to mess with them too much. Um, though I do agree about curvature. Um, I do worry that I would warp them out of all shape because they've also got to sit kind of inside these slots as well. So you mess up the curvatures, then it kind of might make them a nightmare to actually use properly. So I'm, I agree, um, but I'm just not sure. I don't think I can execute it. Uh, in a satisfactory manner without completely changing up, you know, the base of the whole thing. And that goes that way, yes. No, GW does have no control over what we do to our minis. I don't disagree, um, but it's like, I don't think this was what they had in mind when they designed the Garden of Moor. Was for it to be turned into an elven crypt complex guarded by statues of miniatures from the universe that they were going to destroy. Don't think was inside their plan for that kit. You know, I don't think so anyway. Plastic card, yeah, there's another problem is I don't have plastic card, unfortunately. I agree, it would be cool. I just haven't got the pieces for it, unfortunately. Oh, come on. Go in place. There we go. So that goes on that wall. Nice and easy. That goes on that wall nice and actually nice and easy as well. Just got to get this to stand as straight as possible. Okay, so that's that. First piece, done. Banner's done, um, well, as done as it can be. This should still come off 
or at least one side should still come off because it needs to be able to come off if I want to paint. Uh, I mean, I can kind of paint the internals anyway. Why are you not coming off? What are you held on by? Are you just being stubborn? Ah, that's why you were being held on because yes, something, something's holding this. And I don't know what, but I don't know what. <laughs> if that means what I think it means, we're in trouble. Big trouble. Okay, you know what? This is just not coming out. This is just not coming out in a month of Sundays. So, I guess I'm just gonna have to try and attach it whilst trying to take it apart. This is gonna be fun. Fun. Aha, there we go. Got it out. I'm gonna put it straight back in, but I got it out. Okay. Some of the new kits are designed to interlock. Yes, that is, but I had been able to get them out earlier. Uh, I've been able to put it in and out a few times. So I was just getting confused. Like I had a bit of glue dripped into a part and thus caused it to lock. Um, doesn't really matter now because I'm locking it in. Uh, I can get my brush under, under the inside if I need to. Um, so it just locks it in. It saved me so much time later. So that's fine. I mean, this kit's, when's this kit from? The mausoleum, it's from 2010. I remember it when it came out, the Garden of Moore, I always liked that kit. But this one's from 2010. So maybe they hadn't quite, they, I mean, it interlocks, but it wasn't like hold each piece in by all the other pieces levels of interlocking. They weren't quite that far down yet, down the rabbit hole yet. Okay, that needs to go the other way around. Okay. So, put the lid on the glue for now. So, I haven't changed much at the moment. All I've done is I've put a couple of weapon racks from the Scourge Runner Chariot onto the thing. And I'm now gonna put the banner from the Witch Elves kit on as well. Well, I say that, I'm gonna try. It's probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna try. Let's just get these bits out the way and into the bin. Paper clay, okay. Uh, not something I've really worked with before, but good to know. The idea is definitely to make it feel more elven. Um, I think the main thing, I can keep the skulls and laurels. I think they're okay. The skulls in particular, I think are fine. It's mainly like the Templar crosses and the comets. Uh, and some of them I can deal with. Some of them I can't. Like some of the hammers on the graves and things can be removed. Um, but there's so many skulls. I'll be there all day. This is not gonna stick, is it? I have a horrid feeling this is not just going to stick because good as plastic glue is, it's not a miracle worker. Okay, no, maybe it will hold. Those need more glue, but Okay, 
that might just about hold. I don't think so, to be honest, and I'll probably need to glue the banner on to the roof as well. Uh, in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to glue the banner to the roof as well. Just to try and get a bit of extra hold on it. Come on. Catch. Just a catch, come on. good contacts certainly one good contact at the back as well so there we go i've got the banner up there now slightly sneakily secured to the roof as well uh, as well as the rooftop just to try and hold it in place so that's that done so it's a little bit more elven now it's not a huge amount uh, with the weapons on the side uh, right so I can get a few of the iconography bits off of here. Like a lot of the stuff like has got um, like just the hourglass, which is fine, and I don't mind leaving that on. It's the comets I've got to get rid of. Because um, they just wouldn't be there, so I'm just going to get rid of the comets. I can't get rid of everything, and the shields are all the wrong shape and all that stuff, and there's nothing much I can do about that short of re-sculpting new stuff, which I'm not doing because I'm terrible. So I'm just going to get all this stuff off, really. What time am I? Oh, it's half past eight. Blimey, I've only been going an hour and a half. Feels like I've spent ages doing all this stuff, trying to think and plan and do. But maybe not for once. Then again, this doesn't take as long as painting, so maybe that's why. Okay, so I've got the comets off of there. And that's a start. Slightly damaged that shield, but, you know, who's who's really keeping count of all this? Of that. So let me just take that off. I wouldn't say that about Sigmar, it's just he's, there shouldn't be human stuff in this. So one thing I was going to do with the roofs, um, Kaz, is rather than try and tile them, which would look great, Just kick a tripod. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. That hurt. So what I was thinking um, with the roofs was to add um, some shields to them. Sort of like some of the kite shields that the Lumineth have. Or maybe get some of the shields from the Dread Spears and put them on there. That was sort of the idea. Um... Because it's rather than sculpting tiling, which would look great, don't disagree, it would look great. Uh, I can put some shields up there, sort of as a, a ward type thing. Uh, I probably wouldn't put Lumineth on this one because it's the Dark Elven one. But on this one, which is going to be the High Elven one in the end, I uh, could put the shields on there or something like that. Right, I'm going to move that lean tripod before I do it again. Good, nothing damaged, it just hurt. Get out of the way. Glue them upside down. Okay, yeah, that, that could work actually. Actually, yeah, I quite like that upside down. Uh, the teardrop style look, yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that. I'll agree with that actually. That sentiment works. Um, 
Might not put shields on this one in the end. I might keep it a bit clearer uh, now that I've got this banner in the way. <laughs> but, you know, needs must. So with that on there, um, and once it goes onto here, so just sort of, again, to remind people or show people who are new. So they sit on these things, and what I was going to do was put a couple of executioners, like the old metal ones, up on either side and repaint them to look like statues. So they would sort of sit on there as like statue guardians to the tomb. If you know what I mean? So that's sort of what I was thinking of doing uh, with the executioners long term is to turn, or maybe tonight is just to cut off their slaughter bases and then repaint them as statues that guard the mausoleum entrance. So that's that. Um, is there anything else I want to add to this? I'm wary of going too far. Because I do want Elf Elber. Bear in mind, with the Sigmarite Dace, the only thing I did to actually convert it was, well, we swapped the Sigmar statue for the Avatar. It's the only thing we changed. The rest of it was entirely in the paint job. If I leave the bases on, they do kind of look like plinths. Um, they do, actually. I, I was... Mainly thinking of taking the bases off, um, but yeah, it would certainly make them easier if I leave them on their bases. I can just glue them straight down and they do look like little stone plinths. I would agree with that. So the main thing is, this, is, is there anything else that we want to add? So I've got, as I mentioned uh, earlier, some Black Art Corsairs that I kind of don't care that much about uh, actually using and would be okay with cannibalizing for parts. Just as soon as I can dig out that frame under the pile of other frames that I've already got hands on tonight. So we pull that out. That's carib dis, that's carib dis. Hang on, where's the Corsair's gone? Where's the Corsair's gone? Oh, I've accidentally pulled it out already. I'm so special. Uh, the Corsairs do not have pole weapons, unfortunately. They have blades. Um, so they've got uh, knives and daggers and long swords and cutlasses and things like that. So they do not have long weapons. I do have spearmen, uh, but they're high elf spearmen. I need to get some dark elf spearmen um, and make them as like dark shards to keep the spears separate, which is something I could absolutely do. Uh, but I've got these things and they've got the sea dragon cloaks. I, I could see myself making some use out of a sea dragon cloak somewhere on here, but maybe sort of like as a, dare I say it, like a shroud. Sort of like lay a sea dragon cloak over uh, something, maybe, maybe not, probably not. Probably not. It was just an idea, really. Uh, but I've got these cool banner toppers like with a sea drake uh, and a kraken uh, that could be quite cool. Though I've already got a banner topper type thing already. Um, two spears crossed in the door. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That will look great. Um, I just haven't got these new spears. Well, I have, but they mostly belong to my luminaire. And I need all of them, pretty much. Um, two spears crossed in the door. So you sort of, so is that something you'd put on the guardian, like the statue models and have them be, no, they're statues, they're not sentient. Um, so I've already got, as I mentioned earlier, these sort of spear racks on the side. Um, but I have got a back door, actually, now that I mention it, there's a back door here. Um, so you don't go on a, top of a tomb, yeah, don't disagree. Uh, but the problem is, is that all the cool tombs are on the flipping inside, you don't actually see them. 95% of the time, sorry, I've got so many notifications on my phone. Um, so if I just take a random sea dragon cloak, 
Um, probably one of the wider ones or one of the narrower ones. Uh, pick one, doesn't matter. Oh, glued to the actual doors. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I can certainly do that with Lumineth Pikes on the other one. So, if I just pull this one off and I lay it sort of over... Just pull that right up to the front. Okay, no, 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 that's a pile of bones, so no. What about over the back door? Hmm. What about if I put, and it's a bit short, but having the cloak sit, like above the door. So I could have one sort of there-ish, sort of draped over. Or maybe a bit higher up. So yeah, oh, ancient banners. I've got, as I say, I've got a banner flying already on this one. Uh, so I don't need to have two. And I would need to like cut all the neck stuff out and the torso and stuff to get the cloak to properly sit flush. But I could certainly see one hanging. Okay, hang on, right. So this is writing off me ever using these Corsairs again. How much do I care? I don't. I literally bought this box purely for the War Hydra and the Cold One Chariot. The Corsairs were surplus to requirements from the start. And as much as I love my two Fleet Master conversions, they were always just for show rather than actual gameplay. So that's fine. Um, get all these torso and arm bits out. Just take all this stuff out. There we go. Bang. Sideways on the small columns as if there were banners flapping in the wind. Okay, yeah, I'll uh, give that a sec. Is the art of Caliban pre... Not particularly. There's not a lot of artwork of Caliban, I'm afraid. Uh, certainly if there is, I couldn't point you to one. Uh, but we know it was heavily forested, we know it was a death world, and we know that there were mutated beasts on it before the coming of the lion. So, sort of think medieval forest world, probably. It's not a terrible depiction of Caliban. This is where having like a hobby knife or something would be useful to just carve this out, but I don't have one. Um, I would have to give you mod privileges to share an artwork. Um, so hang on a moment. So I'm just going to take chat off screen for a sec and I'm just going to give, okay, that's fine. Do it that way. Um, 
I'm certainly not just 40k. The thing is, to that comment, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Uh, the thing is with the AOS law is, A, I don't know most of it. I, I'm learning, but I'm way behind the curve. B, there are very good people already doing it, like 2 plus tough, and I know Oculus has dipped his toe in as well. And C, um, it's a matter of time. It's pretty much entirely a matter of time because I'm already busy with my teaching commitments and 40K stories is a lot of work. Like, I don't care what anyone says. It takes time to be a law YouTuber and do the research and write the script. It takes bare time. So, as it is, I don't have time to run two law series in parallel. I may do, like, law videos on Broken Realms. Sorry, I'm just picking up some bits that I chopped up earlier. So, like, Broken Realms, the Elven Arcs, uh, the new books for that, because I, I know my elves very well. Um, I might cover them, uh, but they wouldn't be like 40k stories they would be more like reviews and summaries rather than full-blown um law videos though they would of course include tidbits of other law from other places because you know you've got to got to be thorough with these things so that's one option with the sea dragon cloak um it's just a little bit awkward because of its angles that i picked Granted, I picked one at random, so I could probably mess with it um, and get a different one. But sort of on the tower, just is awkward. It's just a little awkward. Especially with those spikes. And on the side of the tower, it's like, why is it only on one side? So I think it's better off over... Fair enough. That's more than fair enough. Well, I do try and convince people to like AOS, but I don't always do the best job. Okay, so if I just take the two side spikes off of this crest, because they're very in the way, these two side spikes out of the way, I can then mount that over one of the skulls. In fact, I could take that skull off the inside it looks like the heaviest curtains in the world <laughs> what does that look like if I put it on the inside dark elves would definitely be that extra um, I, I'm just fiddling with it now and trying to do it and it's just they're not getting like full coverage so I don't know how well this will show up on the screen if I put that like on the inside then that's the sort of thing with the coverage. It's not total. Um, so it would look cool, but it would struggle to get the coverage that would be needed. That would be a nice idea. No. Actually, how does that look? Sorry, I'm just indulging myself now with curiosity. If I put that like over the banner symbol that I put there earlier, um, so if I just lay that sort of next to it, so over top, kind of does remind me, but I think having it be a Corsair on the inside would be weird, given that this is not just Dark Elves, this is Marathi and Malaria, neither of them were Corsairs. In particular, I think it's better off on the back of the outside. That's fair enough. I'm definitely having fun. Um, there was a series of Salamander books by Nick Kime. I cannot remember the name of the last one, though. So I don't remember which the last one was. Um, so whether Rebirth was last, I don't know. Um, would like to talk to Nick Kime one day, though. Uh, get him on the podcast. That would be cool. The tribute in a corner of the tomb. There's not a huge amount on the inside because the building's got to go around it. So there's no room on the inside, unfortunately, because the building's quite thick. So it sort of sits over almost all of the tomb itself. There's no room really except on top to actually put something. 
In fact, even if I put the Corsair cloak on it and like laid it on perfectly, I think I'd actually not even get the building to fit around that. It would actually really, no, it could do it. Just, you wouldn't see it. You, you wouldn't see it, it would just be a, it's extra, but you wouldn't see it on the inside because it's all covered by the blooming building. Podcast is coming out on Wednesday, um, so in about 36 hours, a little bit less than 36 hours from now is when the podcast comes out. Uh, it's all recorded, uploaded, edited, it's all good to go, so no problem there. Side of the sarcophagus. Um, okay, put that there. Does the building still fit? Just, it would go, it would go, just, just not sure. The side of the walls, someone left it after the tomb was closed. So, yeah, sort of like up here somewhere. But actually, leaving it as sort of a, a shroud over the, over the door, I actually quite like it there, as like a shroud over the door. Because that's the back door. Um, sort of bearish. Because on the sides, there's not a great spot for it. Like, there's up here. But then, how would you get it there in the first place? You could leave it strewn around around the outside. Absolutely, but there's not a great space for it. Um, there. Yeah, over the door. Okay, we're in agreement then. Over the door. Okay, I'm just gonna need to trim a bit more to get this smooth. Or get a smoother join, you know. So I wanna get as smooth a join as I can. Use the World War II models. I don't know how the scale of like the historical miniatures relative to 40k guard actually is. So I don't really think I can comment on whether that's a good idea. It sounds interesting, but I just don't know how well it would fit in terms of scaling. Okay, yeah, right. I think this will be okay glued on. I can get my paintbrush underneath it if I'm just careful. Is that one of those cheap big nail files? Yeah, I can I can see that. Get a file of some sort. Oh, how did you sit two minutes ago? You sat really nicely two minutes ago. What happened? There we go. Just got to take this edge off because it's just in the way. This ragged leather edge is just in the way, being awkward, and it needs to go. It needs to go, 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 go. there in the end so that's sort of the back of it now you've got this sort of sea dragon shroud over the back but that angle and it's still flowing consistently across with the wind um, which will be blowing through the mausoleum of course uh, and pulling the banner back so that works as sort of a shroud um, so I think that's all the conversion I actually want to do with this one because I've got the most dark elf parts but I'm also conscious that I don't want to go completely bananas on this one. 
right now. Well, I do, but I also have to be careful of not just overdoing it. Um, so I'm starting to think of what, where, what point is too extra? What, at what point do we arrive at too extra? Also, this big ass banner. Oh, there's got to be a use for that somewhere. Maybe on top of the bell tower. Yeah, maybe have that fly atop the bell tower. Yeah, I like that idea, atop the bell tower. But that's a problem for future Tactica, not today. Well, maybe, uh, actually it's already nine o'clock. I should get a decent night's sleep tonight because my first day at work tomorrow. So, I'm probably gonna go for maybe another 40 minutes or so. There, yeah, okay, there is no such thing as too extra, but there's also just looking stupid. And that's where I'm worried I'm going to stray into too, into looking stupid territory. So I'll keep the rooftop of this clear so I can put the dread spear shields up there. Because I think I do want to get some dark shards off of element uh, at some point um, for my city's army. Because as much as I've just cannibalized, I'm going to be cannibalizing an executioner here, I haven't got rid of any of my old dark shards. So keeping my dark shards together and uh, being able to make some more and then keep the shields because I'm making dark shards. Uh, that would go on bleak swords or dread spears and put them on there that works for me so i think i might do that um so i think i'm gonna leave it there in terms of converting the building and now i've got to just find a way to very neatly stick the executioners onto here now i've got to pick the right five the right two to go on there so let me just get all the metal ones out oh god what are you Oh, you're my old bolt thrower conversion. My bolt thrower crew. Oh, God, yeah, I can remember converting you. There was a high elf one and a dark elf one. That was silly of me. Right, where are the metal ones? There. That's a sword master. That's a sword master. That's an executioner. That's plastic. That's plastic. That's plastic. Where's the last... That's plastic. Where's the last metal executioner in here? We've got two, three, four. Where's the fifth one? Um, I don't have any square bases lying around, no. Um, squares was never anything I left spares of. I was always low on square bases. I'd have to buy some more. Like I say, I've got all these square bases that these old models are sat on, so I could cut the models off of them, and then I have some square bases. Um, ah, there it is. So that's an option, I guess, is to just cut off the square. Because if you do glue the bottom of the current base, the second base upside down, it makes it look like a nice... Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. So, I'm um, not going to cut their bases off, because their bases are, well, slotters. But soon, if I take two non-slotter bases, then yeah... Uh, my old high elf spearmen can be perfectly sacrificed for me to do that. They can be sacrificed. So, uh, chat, I need your opinions. Because at the minute I've just seen there's been me and Chaz having a chat about how to do this conversion. So, I need to pick two executioners to go onto the statues, to be the statues. Uh, and I've got five to pick from. So we've got this one with the sword high above their head, but they're the only one that's like that. I've got two that hold their swords way backwards, so you've got a lot more symmetry. Uh, I've got one that holds the sword relatively straight, and one that holds the sword dead straight. Uh, now, unfortunately, I can't just use the two symmetrical ones because it gets in the way of the mausoleum itself. Um, so I can't actually just use those two. So if there's any of those that look particularly good for statues, then I'm happy to take an opinion on which one. Personally, I think it should be these two. I think it should be these two that are the two statues because this one with the sword raised aloft is got it way too high. It would look very, very anti-symmetrical. And I can't use the two that have their swords like this because if I have one of them on 
the wrong side, it gets in the way of the building. And so that's actually impossible. So whilst you just have a think about that, I'm just going to cut a couple of bases off some old spearmen. I'm not going to rebase them because they've been retired from the game uh, entirely. Uh, they've been replaced by the Oralan. So there's no point in even just rebasing them. So I'll, I'll keep them as safe as I can um, so that they are rebaseable. Theoretically. How about all of them? I haven't got... Uh, there's no room around there. There's only room for probably two uh, to keep the mausoleum doors accessible. Either choose the two that look the closest or two that look the most different. Okay, so maybe one that's got the sword back and the one that's got the sword very highly aloft because I haven't got the perfect symmetry. Or, as I say, you've got the two that are quite similar. Uh, just one's got the sword a little bit too high. Um... What about these two? How are they next to each other? Mm, both got the swords higher, but one's got it like held way over their head, and the other's got it by the side of their head. It's too similar. It'll look like an error. They're different enough. It looks intentional. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I agree with that. So I'm gonna pick this one, and I'm gonna pick this one. So they are very different from each other. Um, so they're not too close and this one will stand on one side of the building and this one will be the one on that side so if I just check that the building can go around that you just double check that I'm just going to do this now off screen yeah there's no issues with that whatsoever okay so I need another square base um, you will do as my sacrifice I was so bad at painting. God, I was terrible. It's like, these are like 2011 models, I think. Maybe slightly earlier, actually. Maybe more like 2009, 2010. Um, and they're ancient and they're terrible. Right. Let's very carefully. Oh, that's when the kit was released in 2005. That would explain why. That says 2005. Fair enough. That makes sense. So that's sort of the look to the plinths. Uh, they're, so, they're not perfectly rectangular. Um, so that's fine. Pump that on there. And then this one, I'll put on that one. I do not intend to make anyone feel old. It's just the fact that, well, I'm coming up on half my life in this hobby. In fact, I might have already passed it technically if I count buying my first codex. Uh, my first miniatures purchase will be roughly sick this is at the end of this week. <laughs> yeah, that, that must be awkward. Like, make this banner look useful even though one side is huge and the other is tiny. Yeah, that's that that's a great brief. Thanks, mate. Can imagine, yeah. Um so I've just got ah. Now I've just got to get the brickwork flat. Uh, so I've just got to get some of the brickwork around here. So this stuff is all, but this side's fine. This side is raised up. So I've just got to trim down a bit some of these bricks uh, to, and again, this is where a file would be super useful, but I don't have one. Well, certainly not a hobbying file. I have got like, do I have a nail file? No. Uh, I have a proper like DIY file, but that's not going to work for this job. Oops. Yeah, I files for um, erosion damage. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll uh, keep that one in mind. Though, I'm not looking for erosion in particular on these. Right, 
Uh, how's that now? <laughs> Luckily this mole's made of metal because he just hit the floor and bounced. Like, properly bounced. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that didn't land on my foot or I'd have probably ended up being stabbed. So, I'll be the best that my feet were nowhere near that model. Rather have just taken a metal sword of elvendom to the foot. That would have been very unpleasant on a Monday evening. Right, that should be enough removal of material. I can get the statues. Yep, there we go. So, um, if I pop this on there one more time, just to check my angles. That sits on there like that. Yep, okay, cool, excellent. Right, let's do this now. What were the Alpha Legion doing when they weren't at Terra? Um, they just naffed off. Um, I don't remember exactly. I probably talked about it in my Legions video. Um, but after the death of Alpharius, they mostly just naffed off, as I recall. I think they just naffed off. Okay, maybe I should have done this with super glue. I think it will go with plastic glue, but it might much benefit with super glue. Okay, that's one. Is that sort of the look of the plinth that Kaz was describing? Um, so yeah, with the two square bases upside down. I take the other one. This one should hopefully be a little easier because there's no paint on this base. Should have thought of that really. I can imagine. And then pop the building on. So there we go. That, roughly, roughly, is one of the mausoleum done. Um, that's all we've really managed to do tonight. Uh, at this point, it's been going for like two hours. But that one is now fully kitted up. So we've got... Uh, a witch elf banner flying, we've got weapons, uh, we've got a sea dragon shroud over the back, and on the inside there is a, um, I don't want to tip this too much, there's a sister of slaughter icon over the tomb, so it's like a dark elven symbol instead. I've also scraped off all the comet symbols uh, from some of the buildings and some of the coffins on the outside, so yeah, that's, um, that's come out pretty well I think. Uh, and I've, as, if I, as I said, if I get some dread spear shields, I might put them on the roof because um, I don't want to do too much more now uh, because I don't think I've got the right degree of parts. I'm certainly not putting like magic turrets of crossbows or anything on it. That would be dumb. Um, so that will do that for that. I think that's pretty good. So the other thing that I've just been hit with in my head has come from this banner in the Corsairs kit because it's a huge banner like it's a huge banner and I want to put it on top of this bell tower so there's a bell tower thing here that goes on top of the smallest of the mausolea and I'd love to put this big banner on it um, and sort of have it be a two-sided banner uh, for the two like sides of elfdom that are represented in the capture of Slanesh light and dark, or well, high and dark as it should be really. Uh, if I just cut that away. So if I put that just up on top of here, and I've got the banner toppers as well from the Corsairs kit. So I've got here 
I'm thinking I'll probably put the dragon rather than the kraken uh, because the dragon at least can be tied to Malerian and Kalidor. So you've got a bit more history in the dragon than you do in the in two friends, one dark, one light. Um, that wasn't the... I'm definitely theming... Uh, well, there's only one coffin in it, unfortunately. Uh, though there is one outside. But the idea is these are souls that were unable to be freed from Slanesh. They were too tainted by Slanesh to be freed and actually repurposed into Lumineth or Daughters of Cain or Ideneth or whatever. So it's less about the individuals and more about the races um, and of solidarity with the entire peoples that were left to die and could not be saved. More what this is about. I like the idea of dark and light, uh, I do. And actually the one in here, the plinth that this one sits on, has got an open tomb outside. Um, so you've got down here, it's this one here. You've got a tomb on the inside and then an open one on the outside. Um, so having like a shroud laid over them, which is like an elven robe, uh, and then on the inside having a sea dragon cloak, for example, there might be room for a sea dragon cloak um, to sort of tie the two together. Might be an interesting idea. I like it. I do kind of like what you're saying there. So just to check. That sits fine that way, but not that way. So it sits that way. And then if it sits that way forwards, then when the roof goes on, the roof wants to sit like that. So that way is forwards. Stick the flag on there. The interiors. Yeah, I do. I, I agree. It's nice to add the little details. Um, it's just that, as I say, this isn't about individuals. It's not about, oh, this was a dark elf that died. This was a high elf that died. These are, this is a sort of wider tribute to the souls that could not be saved. The, the ones too broken to be repurposed or reborn. And they're laid to rest together in memory of almost being when they were together under the Eternity King right before the end so it is it's a sim it's a symbol of unity rather than anything else but theming it around high and dark together i agree is a great idea the only problem is this flag is really big and really heavy and I remember this because Kit, I've got one of these already in my army so I'm tempted if I had well, if I had a drill I would drill down and uh, slot it into the hole uh, but I don't have a drill yeah it is that's what it is it's they were, it was built for remembrance that that's what it is it's about remembrance and honoring the past honoring what they lost um, and why they do what they do, why they fight. Hence, like there's iconography everywhere, past and present. There's statue guardians standing guard over the lost souls and things like that. Um, cheers, appreciate it. Yeah, it's, sort of, I, I've got these ideas in my head, but it's hard to explain them properly. Um, so, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I'm actually, maybe, I might make that a bit, oh, bother. Blinking flag. Uh, I might actually sit that, like, all the way inside and just sit the top on there. And then it's less of a flapping banner held high. Yeah, okay, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So it just gives a wider contact zone for 
the whole thing. Canon half demon elf is Marathi. Yep. She's a giant snake lady. Malerian is more dragon. Uh, he's part elf, part dragon, because he fused with Sephiroth to become Malerian. He fused with his dragon. So I expect Malerian to have a much more draconic aspect to him. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Getting this flat. Um, so Marathi's true form is the Shadow Queen form, and that is due to her corruption inside Slanesh's body, yes. That's nothing to do with Kane. Uh, she was able to restore herself using shadow magic, and that allows her to take her true form, her elven form, Unless she gets angry or severely injured or gets desperate and then she flips back to her Shadow Queen form. Uh, though not necessarily by choice. Sometimes it's voluntary, sometimes it's not. So for example, um, when the Pantheon of Order met for the first time, or when Marathi was first invited to the Pantheon of Order, Nagash realised, hey, you do realise that there's an illusionary spell going on here? And he revealed... Marathi uh, in, uh, revealed the Shadow Queen and Marathi was not happy, took off in a rage come fit, come like just panic attack um, and it wasn't particularly pretty. Uh, it's nothing, her power as the Shadow Queen is nothing to do with Cain. In fact, she gets no power from Cain. Cain is dead. That's the point. made a mess here spirit host models um yeah i could the only thing then is that it's like why if i wanted those souls to be stored away and safe sleeping after their inability like why would they be flapping around i get it it would be cool but that feels more like something i'd do for an agash based thing than for an elven one it's a cool idea though of having like spirit hosts around that would be cool it's just it doesn't suit the elven look and is more akin to what Nagash would have than the elves, if that makes sense. Because these aren't the restless dead. These are the souls too broken to ever be born again. Or well, they would have been born again. The Night Haunt Spell of the Clock. Um, oh, the Mortalis Terminexus, the big hourglass. Yeah, the hourglass would be very cool. Uh, the Mortalis Terminexus, I think it's called. Um, it would definitely be very expensive just for this conversion. Um, and to be honest, I already have a plan to use an endless spell as a soul container, and that's the Malevolent Maelstrom. Um, which is the like one of the basic endless spells from Malign Portent. I plan to use that when I make my Ideneth Carillium. Um, so that will be sort of representing the Carillium and the Shrine to Matlin. Uh, will be made from the Malevolent Maelstrom, which I already own. I just need to get it from my parents' loft. Uh, the only snake Eldar in 40k is the Slith, which is a separate species hired by the Dark Eldar's court at the Archon. Uh, that's the only snake in 40k. So that's a bit of a mess, but I've got the banner onto the top of there. Took a lot of trying to establish a good contact zone, but I got there in the end. Uh, and I'm quite happy about it, actually. Um, so that's good. Um, 
So I think I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to call it a night now because we've made some really, really good stuff out of this thing. This Dark Elven Mausoleum I'm really, really pleased with. I think that's come out super well. Um, but if I keep going, I've got to do the High Elven one and this separate one. And I've still got the gatehouse to do and the statue and the walls and the fences. There is so much to do. Um, so I'm going to stop here. Um, so with the Dark Elven one finished. And then I'm going to stream again on Friday. Uh, we'll get into sort of our normal streaming routine now that I'm back at work. I'll stream on Friday evening. And I think we'll try and work out this smaller one. Uh, see if there's anything we want to do with it. Um, to create something. So at the moment it's kind of... This is where we're at. So it's sort of sat like this as one of the mausolea. Uh, we can add some bits to it and elf this one up a bit. Um, hopefully in the next stream, maybe we'll get something done with the gatehouse too, because we've already started this one and we've done some thinking already. Uh, and then we've got the high elven one to do, but I also need to work out when I'm gonna get my hands on my old high elf models uh, that I can really start using them. Because I've got sword masters here for guardians, but that's about it um, and stuff. But there's just some things to consider there. So yeah, I think that's gonna be the stream for this evening. Um, and I'll get it published uh, as soon as I get the chance. But yeah, I think that's gone well. I think that's gone really well in terms of establishing sort of the ideas, the thought processes, and getting a few things done. The, this room is an absolute tip. Uh, and I'm going to have to spend about an hour tidying up uh, before I go to bed tonight, because I've got work in the morning. Um, and I need the office sort of back to presentable before long. Um, so. I'm going to go do that. Uh, so, yes, thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you for everyone for your help. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you all and working with all of this. So, for now, thank you very much. This has been Tactica Imperialis, uh, and I will see you all very, very soon. Podcast is out on Wednesday, uh, and a slightly changed episode of 40K Stories is coming out on Saturday. But I'll see you live again on Friday night. Bye for now.